Hi, this is Vanessa and Tim. We are back with the latest updated of news from the ASEAN region, and here they are. Australian government continue to support Timorese economic development. Australian Charged Affairs to Timor Leste, Caitlin Wilson said, meeting with the first Vice Prime Minister of Timor Leste, Francisco Calvadilai, to discuss both countries' cooperation for Timor Leste's economic in the future. And I have just um, been meeting with Vice Prime Minister. Um, Excellency and I, as he described, had a really, really good conversation. We share a common history and um, a common region. We are friends and partners. And to start the conversation with your new government about how we continue to build and enhance our cooperation. Um, externally, we are working with um, Timor Leste and want to continue supporting on private sector engagement, tourism, um, and then a range of other areas, including agriculture, um, all of which contribute uh, to economic diversification. Uh, we, we hear from the new government the importance of growing and diversifying the economy. We are here to support you on that. The first Vice Prime Minister of Timor-Leste, Francisco Calvary-Lai, thanks the Australian government for support and the good cooperation with Timor-Leste. Yeah. We had a discussion about economic issues. Australia had helped us a lot, not just recently, but since 1975, during our civil war. On the meeting, we discussed what would Australia do in order to continue its support and its cooperation with Timor-Leste. Kathleen Wilson with the team congratulates the Vice Prime Minister Francisco Calvary-Lai for his new mandate on the structure of the ninth government. Talas Piotai Party to nominate Shreta Tavisin for next Prime Minister vote. A party official said on Wednesday, August 2nd, Talens Piotai Party will nominate real estate tycoon Shreta Tavisin for the next prime ministerial vote in parliament amid a prolonged political deadlock after a general election. Shreta previously served as the chief executive and president at the luxury property developer Sanshiri. He left all his roles to run in 2023 Thai general election. Before the election, Shreta had been chosen by the Pewtai party as a possible candidate for the role alongside Pai Tong Trang Shinawatra. Shreta did not contest in any specific constituency and had publicly stated that his preference would be serving in an advisory role. A parliamentary vote for Prime Minister is due on Friday, August 4th, when Pewtai said it is aiming to form a government without the Move Forward party. The populist Pewtai party finished narrowly behind the progressive move forward party in the May 14 ballot. Kimari says Myanmar Junta's partial pardon of Suchi means absolutely nothing. Aung San Suu Kyi's son Kim Aris on Wednesday, August 2, said a partial pardon by Myanmar's ruling military of jailed former leader Aung San Suu Kyi means absolutely nothing and he calling on Western governments to do more step up pressure on the junta. I'm sure you will do the same of yours that you understand your own country better. Look, the whole world knows that the military have played these games with propaganda, trying to make themselves look better on occasion just because. No, I don't. They need to do something to try and appease the world. The fact that they've reduced my mother's sentence by a few years means absolutely nothing. The pardons of five of the 19 offences for which she was convicted, the pardons mean six years will be shaved off Suchi's 33-year jail term. Myanmar has been in turmoil since early 2021 when the military overthrew Suchi's elected government and cracked down on opponents of military rule with thousands jailed or killed. The 78-year-old Nobel laureate who has detained during the coup denies all the charges for which she was convicted, ranging for the incitement and election fraud to corruption, and has been appealing against them. Monsoon rains triggered by Typhoon Cannon Wars and floats in Philippines. Typhoon Kanun brought more rain to the Philippines, worsening floods in a country that's still reeling from the effects of Typhoon Doksuri, which left more than a dozen people dead and over a million affected. 
in the village of Katmon in Malolos, the capital city of Bulacan, where residents were still trying to recover from the aftermath of Typhoon Doksuri. The threat of monsoon rains by Typhoon Kanun made the floods higher, causing rivers to be overflown and houses inundated, with many houses being flooded to chest deep. The Bulacan Provincial Disaster Agency said the 95 villages in the 12 municipality of the province were affected by the flooding, agriculture was damaged, and around 14,000 individuals were displaced. Apart from Bulacan, several provinces in the northern Philippines like Cagayan, Ilocos Norte, Bataan, and Pampanga have reported serious flooding, agriculture damage, and hundreds of displaced families. Low-lying villages submerged after heavy rain caused by typhoons in northern Philippines. Heavy rains brought by the Typhoon Doksuri and the southwest monsoon intensified by Typhoon Kanun submerged low-lying villages in the northern Philippines. As you can see, it is very deep in our village, which were caused by Typhoon Doxuri and the southwest monsoon and the non stop rains that came about. It rained almost all day and all night, which is why it is very deep in our village. In Bulacan province north of Manila, residents were forced to travel by small wooden boats after incessant downpours in reddit roads and caused floodwaters to swell up to 7 feet deep in low-lying areas. Village councillor Benjamin Deleon said residents did not expect the rains to last for over a week, leaving many of their belongings and vehicles submerged in the floods. The Philippines, an archipelago of more than 7,600 islands, was last week hit by Typhoon Doksuri, which brought winds of up to 175 kilometers an hour or 108 miles an hour to its northern and most populated Luzon Island. United States position on Myanmar unchanged by partial pardon of Suchi. The State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller told reporters Washington's position on Myanmar has not been changed by the ruling military's partial pardon of jailed former leader Aung San Suu Kyi. I would say that no, it does not change our position. We remain deeply concerned by uh, the Burmy, Burma military regime's extension of the state of emergency, which will only prolong the violence and delay a just and peaceful resolution to the current crisis. Uh, we have repeatedly called on the military uh, to immediately release. Aung San Suu Kyi deposed President Nguyen Mint and all the others unjustly detained, something they have not done. Um, and we continue to urge the regime to end its violence, uh, allow, to allow unhindered humanitarian access, seek justice for survivors, and engage with all stakeholders to pursue a peaceful, just, and democratic future for Burma. So there are a number of steps that we believe uh, they have yet to take uh, that they must before we could talk about any change in our posture towards them. State media and informed sources said Myanmar's ruling military pardoned Suu Kyi on five of 19 offenses for which she was convicted, but she will remain under house arrest. The pardons mean six years will be shaved off Suu Kyi's 33-year jail term. Myanmar has been in the throes of bloody turmoil since early 2021, when the military overthrew Suu Kyi's elected government and unleashed a crackdown on opponents of military rule that saw thousands jailed or killed. Heavy rain caused flies float and mudslides in Thailand's north. Thailand media reported heavy rainfall over the past several days caused a flash flood and mudslides in Thailand's northern Mai Hong Song province, sweeping away 12 houses and killing one person in Sopmoy district. TPBA cited Putiput Mebenjamas, the president of the Mai Samlapt sub-district office, said about 100 villagers has been evacuated as the mudslides has damaged roads and cut off highways. Officials were seen in the affected area cleaning out fallen tree branches and inspected road damages. Meanwhile, TPBS observed that the Chi River in northeastern Chayapun province is leveling although still below the river bank. The water level from the Moon River in northeastern Ubon Rachani province still reportedly at a normal level where water is being released at a steady level. Reports by several local media has it that there has been heavy rainfall in Thailand's north during the past several days. Typhoon cannon kills two people and more than 100,000 households loses power.
NHK said two people were reported dead in Okinawa as slow-moving Typhoon Kanun continued to bring heavy rain and gusty winds to southern Japan, prolonging the damage potential of the storm. According to the Fire and Disaster Management Agency, a total of 41 people in Okinawa and Kagoshima prefectures were injured and some 166,000 households were out of power last Thursday morning. Naha Airport, located in Okinawa's capital city and the main gateway to the popular tourist destination, resumed operations after shutting down for two days, but hundreds of flights remained cancelled. The public broadcaster NHK said the storm in the East China Sea was heading northwest and is projected to change direction to move east towards the country's mainland through Tuesday, August 8, but its path was not determined. South Korea's construction workers call for better working condition amid sweltering weather. South Korea's construction workers held a protest rally in front of the presidential office in Seoul to demand better working condition as the country raised the hot weather warning to its highest level for the first time in four years. In the tourist district of Myeongdong, people were seen holding portable fans and eating ice creams while some block and neck cooling devices were on display at shops. An official at the National Fire Agency said South Korea raised the heat warning level in its four tire system to the highest as of 6 p.m. the first time since 2019. The scorching heat is estimated to have killed at least 22 people across the country of last Tuesday, more than triple the record of seven during the same period last year. And that's the wrap up everyone for today's episode. We will see you all again soon.